Hello again. As I look out through the window now, the magnolia tree has lost all its leaves. And of course, as the Americans say, fall is upon us. Well, we would say it's autumn, leading up to Christmas, of course. And some people say people that Jesus was born in March time. But it doesn't really matter to me or any Christians. He, he was born, and we we picked for whatever reason, the twenty uh, fifth of December, twenty fourth of December, and so that's that's hard time. So we're thinking about the end of the year, and uh, of course we were born into a material world, uh, and that's a world which had a beginning and an end, and has seasons, and we're in that season, and of course. The universe, the world has a beginning and end, and so do we. And between these, uh, in a sense, uh, the material world is surrounded, I feel, by a bigger and deeper spiritual world. And that feeling comes really from ancient times. Right across the world, people felt that uh, there's more to life than just this material world. And I don't think it was just wishful thinking. They genuinely feel it. And it's persisted. And uh, this uh, material world is surrounded, I believe, and they believed, and the early church believed, by a deeper, a wider uh, eternal world, not a material one with beginning and end, but one with no end, beginning and no end. And uh, there's, there is a barrier between those two worlds, and I will come back and talk about that later on, but I think it's important. God made us imago dei, as they said, as they say, in his own image, men and women made in his image, one race, the human race, not black, white, yellow or green, the human race. So there is a sense in which we are one. And just looking aloud, Christ, uh, Paul said that, didn't he? We are all one in Christ. And uh, those of us who have been brought up Christians from the beginning have always believed that. And that we think is true. Now, this permeable, this barrier between of time and space between these two spiritual worlds and the material world uh, I believe is permeable and that's evidenced by as the creed says uh, I believe in one in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son the Holy Spirit the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son and with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified and has spoken through the prophets. And I like to add, when I'm saying the creed uh, every evening, I always say, and uh, the poets, and through music, and through um, the saints, and speaks today, and I believe he does, and has spoken through many people at many times. And those times, I'm sure, those people recognise it, as did Wesley and others. And this uh, barrier, permeable, spoke to Abraham, Moses, Samuel. The creed said, with respect to Jesus, for our salvation, he was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. And so that spirit spoke to the Virgin Mary as well. And I believe speaks through us, uh, through the saints and to us today. Now, I was born a, a Wesleyan Methodist. I've been act and for 20 odd years. And then uh, since then I've been very active in various churches since that time and uh, was ordained into one of them. Um, and uh, done my best to try and understand uh, life. I've tried to 
but haven't succeeded in living with God all my life. Uh, regret that some things, many things really, but uh, that's part of growing up, I suppose, and maturing and something to understand more and more of God's purpose for us because we were made in him, his image for a purpose. A few weeks ago, I had an operation on my left foot. Still got the effects of that, still got that high-tech boot on. And um, it, it happened about six years or so when one of our animals stood on it. And for six years, it's been on and off in pain. For some years, it seemed to, to heal itself and do right. But then this last year or so, it's become increasingly painful and made moving around, made walking difficult. Uh, and so I had an operation on it. And the, the surgeon inserted a, 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 a pin, titanium pin, and some sort of plate across, which will restrict the foot a little bit, but for, hopefully uh, no, no more pain will. But this operation <clears throat> took a couple of hours, and sure enough, I woke up just as the anaesthetist said I would, <laughs> and uh, with uh, this boot on, in bed with my boot on. And uh, uh, the, it all went well. That was on a Saturday, and then on the on the Sunday, I had not the night there, and then on the Sunday, I was released, and uh, the wife came and picked me up and took me home. And uh, I have to sleep with the boot on, well, keep it on permanently for a few more weeks. And on the Tuesday, we've all got our own thresholds of pain, haven't we? And on the Tuesday, oh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I felt, uh, well, I don't need to take, it, take the paracetamol anymore because fr quite frankly, the pain was no more than it was in the months before the operation. So I thought, well, I lived with it then, I can live with it now. And I don't really want to take tablets unless I have to. And so uh, I stopped taking them. And that was all right for a day. And then I think it was the next day, uh, all right during the day. And at night, suddenly the, the pain went up quite a quite a lot, a great, great deal. And I thought, I don't want to take any codeine because that's got side effects that I didn't want. They had told me I could do that. That's stronger than paracetamol, evidently, but uh, it's not quite so good for you. And um, so I didn't want to take that. And so I, w I went to bed uh, with this increased pain. And uh, I, I started my prayers again, as I always do, with the Gloria. That's the uh, glory be to God uh, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. And then I recited the Creed. And then the Our Father. <clears throat> and then I talked to one of the saints that I'd chosen. Um, because I, I believe in the communion of saints. <clears throat> there are pe good people, men and women, who have gone before, and we can read about them. And I'd read about this particular one, uh, fairly recent, uh, a, an Englishman, Cardinal Newman, Bishop of Oxford, I think, at one time, and uh, who had become a Catholic. And he'd written uh, The Grammar of Ascent, I think, which was a very, very detailed, you could, you would call it pedantic explanation of the mental steps he took to convert from Anglicanism to Catholicism. And uh, very, very hard, <laughs> very hard read. Anyway, I read that and felt, so I felt I understood a bit about him. And so I've been talking to him, chatting to him uh, every night in prayer. Um, now, before you, I, I talk to him as I'm talking to you now. So I use the same language, the same words. And I've asked him to 
uh, help illuminate my mind and to uh, help me to better understand what it what is needed to become holy because that's the purpose for which we were created to become holy so that we could dwell with God because he's purity itself love itself is now it's not an attribute or a characteristic of him he is love he is being um, he is truth so um, we got to change ourselves before we can meet God not change him change ourselves and so I talked to this saint and during it I, I said to him uh, I wonder is it is it possible for me to ask you to take this additional pain that I've got um, and just just like that really and uh, I said, I'll keep the pain I had, but could you please relieve me of this other? The additional, it really was debilitating. As people who got more pain than I, uh, the threshold is, we've all got a different threshold, haven't we? But I don't think I'm anything special in that respect. Um, and, do you know, instantaneously, it was as if, um, a division had opened up between the old pain on the one hand and the additional pain on the other and something just came down it wasn't a knife, actually it was sharp but something came down so, slowly and just divided it the pain went the additional pain went leaving me with the, the other and uh, it's not come back but it just went and I wasn't surprised because I didn't expect it to go. I wasn't astonished. I wasn't anything. It just went. And uh, if I had told you this story in 10 years, if I'm still here, I would tell it exactly the same way, because that's how it happened. And I've had a few similar sorts of, not similar, but a few experiences with the Holy Spirit over my life. And I always tell the, the tale the same way, the story, the same way as it happened, as I'm telling you now. And um, so I then thought, I, I then continued my prayer really, I thanked him of course very much, and then continued my prayer, and I was thinking, what has he taught me? Well, the first thing, because he taught me lessons as well, and the first thing was that he taught me that God is ever present, always there. And that reminded me of that. God's, God is uh, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. So he was there to hear. I should have known that. But you forget, don't you? And somehow it's, it's a word. And, but no, God's always there. And uh, so he was there at that moment. Uh, and the other thing I... I realize then that Jesus spoke a truth didn't he when he said let cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall or come unto me all ye that are heavy laden uh, and he took the burden and I, I could almost feel that pain going into uh, into the saint uh, or whether it went into Jesus I don't know but it had gone and so that was another lesson that I, I learned there. So I learned a few few lessons there. Um, and I, I really do better understand that phrase, cast thy burden upon the Lord. I think that's the 50, Psalm, Psalm 55, actually. And he shall sustain thee. Because the music and the words of Elijah from Mendelssohn's oratorio, Elijah, runs through my mind. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Just wonderful uh, words that Mendelssohn set to music there. And um, I better now understand the phrase, uh, he has borne our suffering. I really do. Um, now, but can I come back now to this thought of the uh, the barrier 
between the material world and the spiritual world. We were, we were made, men and women were made imago Dei in God's image. And we live in the material world. The Adam and Eve story explains why we live in the material world. And I don't want to go into that. Uh, some people have different perceptions of, uh, of that, but it tells us the truth. Uh, that story does and that was a story about how we lost our immortal state for which we were created anyway here we are where we are we're in the material world but uh, and we don't you know we don't have to seek God we spend a lot we say we spent a life looking for God we're wasting the time because he's here he's ever present with us he's within us and that, I think, is why in the Creed says the Holy Spirit, the, the giver of life, that's God, the giver of life, is with us anyway. And the fact that he's omnipresent, in a way, makes prayer useless. Now, you may gavel at that, or cavil at, cavil at that, I suppose. But it is useful, but it doesn't do anything for God. Prayer is for us. We need to articulate our feelings and confess our faults and ask for strength because we're the ones that need to change. That's no, not him, is it? No, it's us, it's me. That's why prayer is useful for me and uh, not for God. He knows everything anyway. But having made us in his image, but we're in the material world, and we can get close to that barrier, we know it's permeable because the Holy Spirit spoken through it and acted through it. And uh, you go to the scriptures for more and more evidence of that. And I think I mentioned in there, I think it, the Holy Spirit in the Creed says, speaks to the, through the prophets, and I believe through music as well and through the saints, and through literature and poetry, and speak through prayer, uh, and speak through you and me from time to time. And when that happens, we remember. And uh, brings us back to the Imago Dei. Here we are in this material world, and we can look at the world through the eyes of God, because we were made his, in his image. And when we do that, what do we see? We see a beautiful world. We can see all sorts of things. We can be cynical. We can be naive. Or we can take a rational, logical view. But a rational, logical view in which we don't just take logic to an illogical conclusion as often happens but we let the spirit that works within us balance what we look so galileo for example looked at uh, through his telescope and saw the glory of god he didn't just see stars and mathematical patterns or solar patterns he saw work it was the evidence of god just as all the most anyway of the early scientists did by the time we get to Jeremy Bentham things are starting to get a bit cynical I think but um, Haydn was able to say start his lovely work the creation wasn't it the heavens are telling the glory of God and the wonders of his grace wonderful anyway um, we can look at the world through God's eyes and people could look at God through our image as we can look at God through other people's image so we all know good men and women don't we and we say I see something of God I learn something of God from them from the saints as well of course and I often think what do they learn from looking at me and uh, not, not what I would like them to be seeing. But that's the changes that must come 
and I must make because I have free will and uh, most of my life I've tried to live it um, making the right decisions but sometimes I've made dreadful decisions um, but there's because we are in his image because we understand this barrier that he can get through and, and dwells the Holy Spirit I'm guessing dwells this side of the barrier most of the time because it's always available and I think that prayer is a moment when we are open to God and he can come through that barrier I think another time is when we are doing what Jesus said take this eat do this in remembrance of me as often as you can I shall be with you. So I think it's in it's in Eucharist, it's in the Mass, it's in the breaking of the bread. I think Jesus is there, or can be there. He is there, but are we ready to change? So it comes to us really. It's everything is to us as to whether we whether He's there in spirit and in truth. That's up to us, really. So that barrier can be breached in so many different ways. Let me just have a, this time of the year, when we're coming up to the birth of uh, Jesus in, in our date system, or Yeshua, as the Jews call him, let me just end in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, just thank you Thank you for knowing us, for being with us, for supporting us. Help us, Lord, to get closer to you. We let us, Lord, remember you in our prayers, in our in the Eucharist and the Mass or the breaking of the bread. Whatever the point, Lord, that is closest to you. We know that you say wherever one or two are gathered in thy name, you will be there. Thank you, Lord. Be with us at this very moment, we pray. In the name of Jesus, our Saviour, Sustainer, and our Friend. Amen.